The Venton Cinch has been available for years with a typical high step frame design, but with their latest refresh and release of a step through version, it looks like the company hopes to make their folding e-bike accessible to an even wider audience. Along with the updated frame, several new features have been added that make the new Cinch folding step through an attractive option when compared to other folding e-bikes in the same class. However, there are several components that have been left off the bike, which are noticeable. I'll give a rundown of everything that comes on the bike, and since Inventon has a whole page dedicated to comparing their bikes to Rad Power Bikes, I'll also compare the Cinch to Rad's current folding step-through model, the Rad Expand 5. If you were to put the original Cinch next to the step-through version, side by side, they look drastically different. However, despite this difference in the frame, the two styles share many of the same stats. Same weights, total lengths, electrical components, and almost exactly the same folding size and handlebar reaches. So the choice between the two mainly boils down to if you want a high step over or a more accessible step through frame, not to mention the updated color choices. The high step comes in the standard gray, white, and black variations. However, with the step through, Aventon threw in a bit of color and gave the choice of either moss green or bonfire red. I think both colors look really great, personally. Because folding bikes are considered more portable than a standard non-folding frame, the weight of the bike can be a major factor. Compared to the Expand, the Cinch is slightly heavier at 68 pounds, while the Expand is 5.5 pounds lighter at 62.5 pounds. At these weights, you wouldn't want to be hauling either of these bikes up a flight of stairs, but at almost 6 pounds lighter, the Expand may be more manageable for some. The Cinch has a total length of 67 inches long, and a wheelbase of 44.5 inches, while the Expand is just an inch longer at 68 inches length and 45 inch wheelbase. The standover height is very similar on both models as well, slightly over 15 inches for the Cinch and 16 inches for the Expand. However, the Cinch and the Expand aren't entirely similar and start to differ on geometry. The Cinch has a handlebar reach of 19 inches, while the Expand has 16 inch. Both e-bikes list very similar recommended rider heights on the bottom half of the span, but the Cinch looks to be better suited for taller riders and is able to accommodate somebody who up to 6 foot 3 inches tall, while Rad only recommends somebody who is 5'10 max. These are only recommendations, of course, and I've seen taller or shorter riders use e-bikes way beyond their size limits. The Cinch has the traditional folding bike handlebar design, straight bar and a very tall adjustable riser. You've probably seen the same setup that the Cinch has on most other folding e-bikes. While the Expand was given a short rise BMX style bar and a more traditional stem, the straight handlebars offer height adjustment and seem to fold in a more compact manner than that of the Expand. However, the BMX bars do generally feel more comfortable to use and in my opinion look much better as well. As far as the electronic components go, the Cinch has a 500 watt nominal and 750 watt peak, a Venton branded geared hub motor in the rear, which should provide plenty of torque given its wheel size. The Expand has a 750 watt motor that peaks at 750, so at the top end, the motor performance will be almost indistinguishable. The batteries on the Cinch and the Expand are both 48 volts, 14 amp hours, or 672 watt hours. The only difference is the Expand has an external battery pack, while the Cinch step throughs battery is integrated into the frame and accessible through the top of the down tube. There are always pros and cons of integrated batteries, but this seems to be the direction many e-bike manufacturers are going with their new models. While the high step version of the Cinch has a battery located fully inside the frame, which is only accessible while the bike is folded. This is great for protection against the elements, but can be pretty inconvenient if you're constantly removing the battery to store or charge away from the bike with its included 3 amp charger. The battery on the step through cinch is protected against wetness or mud coming from under the bike, but may be susceptible to rainfall coming from above and pulling in the bottom of the battery tray. Inventon says all of their e-bikes are built to be IPX4 water resistant, so there should be no issue since they are resistant to water splashes from any direction, However, I would still advise caution. The 14 amp hour battery powering the 500 watt motor should give you an average of 40 miles, but as they indicate with their real world range testing of chart, these ranges can vary wildly depending on quite a few different factors such as riding style, weight on the bike, terrain, and several others. If you like to ride throttle only, you'll generally get about half the range they estimate. It's nice to have more information regarding range other than a simple 45 plus mile range estimate as Rad likes to list, but your literal mileage will vary depending on how or where you ride, so keep that in mind. The Cinch is sold as a class 2 20 mile per hour max e-bike right out of the box. With the display settings, this can be bumped up to class 3 28 miles per hour. However, what I hear of actual results, it's closer to 23 to 25 miles per hour. The Expand is stuck at this 20 mile per hour limit unless you purchase the optional LCD screen upgrade, which lets you squeeze out a few miles per hour more as well. 
The Cinch has a great looking color LCD screen with a five button remote on the left handle, right next to the thumb throttle. The display gives you the speed, odometer, battery level, and also has the ability to sync the bike to your smartphone via the Inventon app. When connected, it will unlock greater control over the settings within the controller, as well as other information such as mileage and even how many calories you burned and how much CO2 that you didn't emit into the air by biking instead of driving. Apps are something that are either done right or done very wrong. From what I can see with the Inventon app, there are a lot of great features. It seems useful and it's not just something that the company did just to add a checkbox on a features list. This is one area where the Cinch really shines compared to the Expand. The Expand comes with a basic bare bones LED display. An upgraded LCD display is available for purchase for $100 with RAD, but it's still pretty primitive compared to the newer, full featured, and app enabled color displays that you're seeing on newer e-bikes. However, I can imagine that there are a good number of people that prefer the simplified interface and will feel that the color display and the smartphone sync functionality has too many bells and whistles than they prefer. Computer, activate now. So it's up to you which you would rather go with. All event and e-bikes have good looking frame designs that look like real care was put in the design and manufacturing. They typically have nicely wrapped cabling routed through their frames and clean welds. As I mentioned, the step through cinch comes in green or red frame colors and are accented by tan walled tires. The original high step cinch comes with a typical 20 by four inch knobby fat tires, very similar to what the Expand comes with. But Aventon went with a unique street tire tread on the step through. The tires are still 20 by four inch, which is almost becoming the standard on folding e-bikes, but they have a nice tan colored sidewall and a diamond pattern tread that makes them stand out. They look very grippy on roads and seem like they would handle dirt trails and light off-roading, but may not be knobby enough for major off-roading. However, with the 45mm travel fork suspension and no rear suspension, you're not going to take this e-bike down major mountain bike trails anyway. The Cinch and the Expand both come with mechanical disc brakes with 180mm rotors. However, the Cinch is equipped with Tektro branded levers and calipers, while the Expand has components from a lesser known company, Radius. I suspect that the average rider will really see no difference between the two, but some will prefer to have a brand name assurance of Tektro. Another component that is similar feature-wise, but differs on the brand, is the 7-speed drivetrain. Both the Cinch and Expand have 7-speed gearing with slight variations on the gear ratios, but the Cinch has Shimano components versus the micro shift of the Expand. Another instance of a brand name component versus a lesser known part manufacturer. As I mentioned at the start of this review, the Cinch comes out of the box missing a few components that I feel are either very common or just about standard on all e-bikes these days. For example, the cinch is missing the front and rear fenders. The Rad Expand has these coming in standard. Depending on the region you live in and daily riding conditions, fenders are not a necessity for everyone, so it's not unheard of that they don't come stock, but they are still nice to have. These are available for purchase as a front and rear set on Venton site for $84. Another component that is nice to have that comes standard on the Expand while not coming on the cinch is the rear rack. This is also available for purchase as an add-on for $50. Something to note as well is that the cinch doesn't appear to have front mounting points to add a front rack. A front rack isn't something everyone necessarily would want to add to a folding e-bike, but some riders may need or want the extra on-bike storage. The most noticeable feature that has been left off the cinch is lighting. This seems to be the norm for the manufacturer. From what I can see, all Aventon e-bikes lack any front or rear lighting out of the box. While this may seem odd and certainly isn't the standard, there are some pros to not having lighting, such as having two less things on your bike that can malfunction. It also definitely makes the look of the bike more streamlined without having the extra wiring and clunky brackets and lights bolted to the frame. However, the added safety and visibility of having front and rear lighting on your e-bike, especially if you ride at night, greatly outweighs the inconvenience of a possible component failure. If you want to add lighting to the cinch, Aventon has rechargeable options available for purchase on their store as well. $44 for the basic headlight and $27 for the basic taillight. More premium options are there as well if you want to pay for higher quality lights. The Cinch is currently priced at $1,800 and after the Expand's two separate price hikes so far this year, it is listed at $1,600. Looking at the features like color display, front suspension, integrated battery, name brand components, and such, the Cinch is fully justified to have a price tag that's $200 more than the Expand. I try to factor in the total costs of an e-bike purchase, however, which includes any accessories that I feel people will more than likely need when buying their bike. So if you factor in the cost of the components that I mentioned that were missing from the cinch, such as fenders, front and rear lighting, and a rear rack, you'll add another $205 to this purchase price. 
the final cost would come to just over $2,000. For the Radix Band 5, you would need to add the cost of the LCD display upgrade to it, bumping its price to $1,700. So in the end, a $300 difference in price between the two folding e-bikes, with relatively similar features. In the end, it's your choice to decide whether the Venton Cinch step-through is the right folding e-bike for you, or if you'd rather spend your money somewhere else. Personally, I think the new Cinch has a really great looking design and decent components for the asking price. Just be aware that it lacks a few key components that you may have to shell out more of your hard-earned money to get it ready to ride. If you're planning on picking up a Cinch or any other folding e-bike, let me know down in the comments. I'm interested in what people are buying. As always, I'm not being paid by Inventon to say any of this, and I didn't receive a Cinch to test out in order to make this review. I do have this standard event and refer a friend link that will give you 5% off your new e-bike purchase. If you'd like to take advantage of that, go right ahead. It will be in the description of this video. 5% doesn't sound like much, but when a new e-bike is almost $2,000, 5% can be a big chunk of change. I hope that you found this comparison slash review helpful, and if so, please give this video a like and maybe leave a comment. If you'd like to see more videos from me, please subscribe and maybe hit the notification icon. It would really be appreciated. Thank you for watching and stay safe out there. Those look great. Definitely. Are you sure? They're even bigger than the last pair I bought, and those were pretty huge. Did you cinch them? <sighs> I tried them with a belt. But... Oh, you can't do that. You gotta cinch them. Yeah, we told you to cinch them. Yeah, you just paper bag them out and cinch them. Well, you know, it's just. Uh, okay, you're just, just gonna cinch them and then you'll see. You'll love them. Okay, so bye.